If we do go back to root causes, it all comes down to nutrition. Uh, in human health and animal health and plant health, uh, nutrition is the key to everything. It all comes back to, and what is nutrition farming? It's about minerals, it's about microorganisms, and it's about humus, and how those three things, and they are intimately intertwined, how they interrelate, and how we can work to improve those relationships. So it's an integrated holistic system where we are looking at that link between soil health, crop resilience, animal vitality, farmer's health. We have at least a quarter of our four days course talking about your health. And that's fairly important when we look at the Rural Press supplement from two and a half years ago, where for the first time ever they published the health statistics on Australian farmers. Here it is, theoretically the healthy outdoor green um, profession and what was discovered was that it was double the levels of cancer, actually two and a half times cancer, double the levels of diabetes, heart disease, stroke, round the, you know, round the double. Uh, it was three times the level of depression and three and a half times the level of suicides of the next closest profession. So it's not quite the healthy profession. And so in terms of a, a genuinely bio, a, a holistic approach, you do have to be a healthy farmer to have a healthy farm, in my opinion. So we have to spend a lot of time teaching you how you can live a longer, happier, healthier life. And that extends right through to hair tests and, and blood pressure and blood sugar and all sorts. And you get a report card so that you have a bit of a game plan with how you can move forward. But when I started this journey, I, I certainly recognised those key interrelationships, but I didn't understand the link to planetary health. And what has driven me at this frantic pace over the last three or four years is, is the wor words of a man or the suggestions of a man called Professor James Hansen who most would put in the top five, many would say he's the number one climate change scientist in the world. Uh, and James is a NASA climate change scientist and his unique claim to fame, and believe me, it is totally unique, is that in a 49 year history, in a science where you're making hundreds of predictions on a yearly basis, this man has never, ever been wrong. So never, he's not been, I mean, Einstein was wrong hundreds of times. That's, that's infallibility. I mean, it's supposed to be only the Pope, but this bloke has done it. Uh, and so when James told us almost three years ago that we've got five years left, many of us got up and started running. Uh, five years, not till we've got no world, but five years until it's irreversible and we live in a place that's a shadow of what it used to be. So uh, in fact, many of the guys with some of the grim predictions don't understand that there's an answer. And the very simple thing to understand is if we look first of all at that, the short story of the climate change story, this blanket of greenhouse gases, first thing to understand, we've got to have that blanket, we wouldn't be here, we wouldn't have a livable climate without those three greenhouse gases trapping some of the heat and creating the climate in which we live. But with our outpouring, see it took us till 1900 to get our first billion people, we sped up and by 1950 we had two billion, then we went crazy and in 65 years we went from two to 7.4 billion and that's been fueled by ancient sunlight, by the proceeds of photosynthesis, coal and oil from many millions of years back. And that outpouring of CO2 seems like a huge amount, but there's double that has come from our soil, just slightly less than double that. We've gone from 5% organic matter down to 